Hi everyone, Jeff from Show It here. Thanks for choosing Show It to create your website. In this video, I'm going to be stepping you through the tools inside of Show It to give you the confidence you need to create a website that is unique to you and your business. This is the best place to start with Show It, and it'll take less than 30 minutes. If you don't have time to watch the whole video now, not a problem. You can jump ahead to the chapter that contains the content you're looking for. Thanks for watching. Now let's jump in and get started. So the first thing you'll want to do if you haven't already is create your free account to get started. Head over to showit.co and click create your site. Just fill out a little information about yourself and no credit card is required for the 14 day trial. Once you've created your free account, open a Chrome browser and go to app.showit.co. The Show It platform itself, the builder portion where you create your website, only works with Google Chrome. Your website will be viewable in all web browsers, not just Chrome. However, Chrome gives us some tools to give you a better website building experience, which is why you'll have to use the Show It builder in Google Chrome. So you just sign in here. All right, now we're inside of Show It, and this is the first screen you're going to see here. This lays out all of our free designs to choose from. You can look through all of these designs here, which are completely free to start with. If you click on one, it'll give you a preview of the mobile and desktop version of the site. And when you find the one you want, you can click start with this design. If you'd like to browse more of our premium designs, which are available for purchase from our amazing design partners, you can head over to store.showit.co to see all of our available designs. Now, if you buy a design from our store, it will show up here under the Your Designs tab, just like Lane East has here for me. Once you've chosen a design to start with, you'll see it loads up here in our Show It Builder. Now, you'll notice a few things right off the bat. On the left side of our screen, you find our site panel. Here is where all of the pages and canvases and content that makes up your site is housed. On the right, we have the Properties panel. This is where you'll change properties and settings for all of the content found in your site from pages to canvases to photos to specific elements. And on the bottom is our toolbar. There's a lot of great and helpful tools down here that we'll cover as we continue. Now let's look at some of the basics of building your website. We're gonna be over in the left site panel here as we look at this. So first let's talk about the hierarchy of how show it works. You have pages which you can see here. We only have two pages currently on this site, our home page and our new page. However, if you look at our home page, you'll notice it's one long scrolling page with a ton of content. But this page is made up of separate canvases that house that content. So if I click over to the page tab in my site panel here, you'll see the home heading, which indicates that we're on the home page. And all of these smaller layers underneath are the canvases that make up the page. So if I click contact, it'll scroll me down to the contact portion here in the staging area and you can see all of the elements that make up this different contact canvas. If I hover over them here in the site panel, it will show those different elements in the staging area. Now I also have the option to click on the canvas in the staging area I want to work with, like the intro canvas here. If I click it, you'll see that we've now been moved to the intro canvas here in the site panel. And again, you'll see all of the elements that are housed on this particular canvas. You'll notice the three dots next to each of these layers. Every single canvas has it, as well as our home heading here. This is our options menu. Clicking the options menu will bring up these extra settings here. So we can add a new canvas to our home page, or a blank canvas to our home page, add an entirely new page, or add one of the site canvases from our design. We'll talk a little bit more about site canvases later. One really cool feature of Show It is adding canvases. So if I want to add a new canvas to my homepage, I can click here, and in this window, I can choose to add a canvas that exists on my current site, on any of the sites that I have in my account, from any of the purchase designs I have in my library, or from any of our free designs. So let's say I like this one here, number seven, by the design space. If I click on pages to about, I can choose any of these canvases off any of the pages in the design. So let's say I really like the actual About section here. I've selected this canvas, and you'll now see I have the option to add. Along the bottom here, I can use the original design, or I can click this button to apply my fonts and colors, and add that right to my site. Now you'll see when I add that canvas, it's added to the bottom of the page shown here. If I'd like to change the order, I can simply click, hold, and drag this canvas 
right up to where I want it to be, as you'll see here. But I don't actually want to use this canvas in my design, so I'll click this Options menu, and I'll go ahead and click Delete. Let's look a little bit more at the Options menu for Canvases. Now I've opened our Options menu on the canvas, and from here I can choose to rename, add a canvas view, duplicate this canvas, copy or cut this canvas, or I can make this canvas visible only on desktop or mobile. So for instance, if I uncheck Visible on Desktop, you'll see that canvas has disappeared completely from the desktop version of my design. However, you'll see that it still exists here on the mobile version. You can also choose to uncheck both boxes if you'd like to hide an entire canvas from a page. This is helpful if you've got content on a page that you're not sure you want to keep, but you're not quite ready to delete. Let's talk a little bit more about canvas views, which you saw on the options menu to add to a canvas. On my About Canvas, we have four canvas views which are shown here. The folder icon shows us that we have canvas views on this particular canvas, and the number just to the right tells us what canvas view it is. This number here won't indicate what view it is because we can actually rename that view to whatever we want. Now you might be wondering, what is a canvas view? Well, a canvas view allows you to create unique groups of content shown independently on the same canvas similar to how a slideshow works. So if I click through these canvas views, you'll see that the content changes. However, there is some content that doesn't change, like our arrow box, our arrow, the decorative bar, and the title. Since these four elements are outside any of our canvas views, they'll be visible for each view on the canvas. All the other content, like the photo and the text and the number, change with each view. Let's look at that in action. I'll click on preview up here in the top right corner. Now I get an in-app preview here that I can use, or I can click this blue link in the top left corner, and it will pop me out to a full browser preview here. If I scroll down to the About canvas and click the arrow, you'll see how those canvas views work as they transition through the different content on the canvas. Also, this full browser preview is a really fantastic tool. You can copy this URL and send it out to whoever you'd like to, to take a look at your site while you're building it, maybe give you some feedback. All right, so now you're ready to start adding your own unique content to this design. If I'd like to replace this image, I can simply double click it, which pulls up my media gallery here. We'll talk a little bit more about the media gallery in the next video. So if I click over here, I can choose the image I want and you'll see it replaces it right there for me on both the mobile and the desktop version. But let's say that I really like the way this photo plays on mobile here, but I'm not loving the way it shows on desktop. What I can do is click over to my page tab and then select the element I want to work with. You'll see these icons here, one that looks like a mobile phone and one that looks like a desktop monitor. These are actually toggle switches that will hide elements from one version of your design or the other. So if I click the monitor icon, you'll see it removes that photo from my desktop altogether. Then, with the intro canvas selected where I want to add a new image, I click the media library down here in the bottom toolbar. Let's say we really like this image. And I can add it right to the page there. Now I can resize the image to how I see fit and place it in the space. You'll see that it's also added this image to our mobile design, which I do not care for. So just like we did before, we'll click the toggle switch, this time for the mobile design. This lets you really customize your mobile and desktop experiences, which is so key as we're seeing more and more consumers accessing websites on their mobile devices when looking for goods and services. To replace any text in your design, simply hover over it and double click and you'll be given the option to edit text as you see fit. You'll also see this formatting bar that pops up at the top. If I select a piece of text within my overall paragraph, I can choose to format it by bolding it, italicizing it, or adding a link. And you'll see here that there's various linking options, whether you want to link to another portion of your website or to a specific URL or other. Once you've formatted everything, you can go ahead and click the complete editing button or just click outside the text box. Let's say I want to add brand new text to a canvas. I can hover over the text icon here in the bottom toolbar and choose from those text options we saw in our design settings, title, heading, subheading, and paragraph. I'm going to choose heading here. You'll see it's currently the same style as my current heading. So in this example, I want to change this to say romantic authentic style. 
So I've typed up romantic here and I can choose text style from my properties panel. Now I have the option to change this style independently and create something a little bit more unique here and place that wherever I may want. Now if I'd like to center this text with the text below, I can click one and hold command or shift to click the other text. You'll see that our properties panel turns into our alignment menu here. We have another great help doc which will teach you what each of these options mean. But if I want to align to group here, I can choose to center them on each other. Let's take a little closer look at our site panel. So under our site tab here, you'll see our first option is site settings. If you click it, you'll have a range of different options. You can rename your site. You can connect your domain when the time is right. You can choose your favicon, which is the small image that will display in the browser tab, like the show it icon here. If you click over the blog, this is where your blog will be connected if you have one. You would just click edit and make sure you have the same domain selected. Or if you're using a separate domain for your blog, make sure that domain is selected there. Under the third party tab, you have spaces for Google Analytics and Facebook app IDs. If you want to know more about tracking traffic on your website with Google Analytics, we have a great help doc that will talk more about that. Next is the design settings. It can sometimes be easy to find yourself overwhelmed with all of the creativity that you have inside the Show It platform. One really great way to quickly and drastically change up the design you've started with is here in the design settings found in the site panel. If we click design settings, you'll see it opens to this menu here. These are our smart swatches, which we can swap out the color palette of. And these are the fonts set for the different text styles, such as title, heading, subheading, and paragraph on our desktop and mobile design. So here, if I want, I can click a smart swatch and change the color, and that change will be reflected in my site. So let me just show you a couple of quick changes here. You'll see it already has changed that title text from black to red. Likewise, if I change this text to something a little bit different, you'll see those changes reflected as well. So now I've saved the changes, and you'll see that my font and font color have changed here, and my button color has changed here. So anywhere that those properties were applied throughout your entire site can be changed really quickly just by using the global design settings. Now if we look back at our design settings, you'll see this second tab here called fonts. This is where you'll add any free Google fonts you'd like to your account. Just click the drop down, find a nice font that you'd like, and you'll see it pop up over here in the preview. Now if I click add Google font, you'll see it's added it down at the bottom of my list here. Likewise, you can upload custom fonts. We have a fantastic help doc in our help doc library that will teach you exactly how to do that. Below that is the media library. Here's where you'll keep all of your content from graphics to images to videos. I can choose to upload my files here or I can simply open my finder and drag in any image that I want to add to my media library as you'll see here. I can also add new folders to organize my content into different types and categories, which I can then search for over here using these tools. Now you'll notice if I hover over a particular image, two icons appear. This check mark here, which is a simple selection tool that you can use to select multiple images to add to a gallery, to a page, to move to a new folder, or to delete. The other icon that appears is this chain link. If I click on it, it'll copy the location of this image, and I can actually add that right into a new browser tab, and it will take me directly to that image hosted on our servers. When uploading media, you'll want to upload images at 3500 pixels on the long side for best quality. Show it will handle the rest from there. Our resizing tool will display your images at optimal sizes based on the display size of the viewer. Next we have the pages section, which is where you'll find all of the pages that make up your site. We only have two pages here, our home page, which is shown by this icon here, and this new page, which is blank. Here is where you can choose to set a different page as your home page, which is really helpful if you want to do a landing page or an under construction type of page while you're building out your site. I can also click the plus here to add a blank page or select a new page, which gives me the option to add a page from the current site that I'm working in, any sites in my account, any purchase designs in my library, or from any of our free designs. So let's say I like the Sandy Winds by Penguin Design. I can choose the services page and I can choose to use the original design or apply my fonts and colors and add it right there. You'll see that it's now been added to this page here. I can also choose to delete it quite easily if I'd like. 
Below that is your blog template section. Every single design in Show It will come with a blog and single post page. Your blog page serves as your post feed, which will display all of your different blog posts. The single post page stands as the open post view. So if I click on a post in your blog to read it, this design is what will show up. Show It utilizes WordPress for blogging. So in these blog template pages, you have all the power of Show It to simply drag and drop elements wherever you want them to be and set your design. You'll see if I select an element here, it has this post title option or post date, post categories, post excerpt. As you can see, these text properties are WordPress placeholders. So when you create your blog content in WordPress, these placeholders tell it what content to pull from that blog post, such as your title, the date, the category, or an excerpt of your post content. We'll take a more in-depth look at blogging and the relationship between Show It and WordPress later. Also in the site panel, you have your page tab. Here you have your page heading, so we're on the home page in this example, and all of the canvases that make up the content on that page. If I click on a canvas, you'll see all of the elements on that canvas as well. If you look to the bottom toolbar, in the left corner you'll see your name. If you click on it, you'll get some account options. Here you can manage your subscription or domain. You can create a new site, which allows you to choose a new design to begin with, which will not replace your existing design. You can add as many designs as you'd like to your account without a problem. You can also see your sites, which will show you all of the sites that you have in your account. So if I have some different plus sites, say for a client gallery or for photo education, as you see here, I can open, duplicate, or delete those site designs. Let's say I want to open it and work with it. So here I can design a completely different style site. And I can host this site at a subdomain of my primary domain. We call these plus sites. You can find out more about them in our help docs. Last of all, and most importantly, you have your user profile settings. This is where I would come to put in my blog connection request, which you'll see I have already connected here, so I have the option to manage it. Also informs me that my blog is live. And we keep a backup of all of your contact form messages. So if a message is submitted for your contact form, this is where a backup will happen in case anything were to go wrong with your email and that not come through. Let me show you just exactly how that works. And if I go down to the contact form here, I can submit a contact inquiry. And if I click send, and you'll see the thank you option. We're utilizing a canvas view here to create this thank you message. Now if I go back to my site and go back to that user profile, you'll see that message has now come in here. And you can expand and see the full details. You'll also be able to edit your profile. You can add some of your information, add a photo, even connect to Facebook if you'd like. Here, another area where you'll see just your messages and settings. You can change the email associated with your account, update your account password, manage your blog here, and in notifications here, you can also opt in to be texted when a new contact form inquiry is submitted. As we continue along our bottom toolbar, you'll see these three icons. The first icon shows us our mobile and desktop view side by side, which we suggest as the best practice for designing your site. But sometimes on smaller screens, or if you're working on just one version or the other, specifically, it's nice to be able to toggle, and you can do that here by clicking these options. The next icons are zoom options. You can zoom out, reset the zoom, or zoom in. And you will need to have the version of the design you want to zoom on clicked. So if I want to zoom out on desktop, I'll need to make sure that's clicked. If I want to zoom out on mobile, I'll have to make sure that's selected. And you can simply reset the zoom just like that. Next in our bottom icon, we have the text tool where you can add different text options to any canvas in your site. Our next icon lets us add different elements, such as galleries, videos, embed code for third-party elements, icons, or rectangles. Rectangles are very versatile in your Show It site. They can be used for hairlines, containers, all kinds of things. And lastly is our media library option. To the right of that, we have the undo and redo arrows, which you can use if you accidentally delete something or make a simple mistake. 
And most importantly, in the far right corner, we have our Git Help section. Here you can access our library of over 200 help docs by simply clicking this icon, or this chat bubble will connect you directly to our awesome, friendly support pros who will definitely get you whatever help you may need. Now, taking a closer look at our properties panel, if we select a canvas, you'll see that we have different properties for all elements. A canvas, a canvas background, animation, transitions, scroll actions. Now, if I select a different element on that canvas, such as this title, you'll see that those change. Now, I can control my text style, text properties, size and positioning. If I want to center it to the canvas, I can do that click actions if I want to link this particular piece of text or any design element be it a piece of text an image an icon whatever you want you can link to anywhere else in your site or an external URL whatever you need to do you can do it here so in short anytime you need to change styles or properties of any element on a canvas you'll want to select that element and then look to the right properties panel now let's take a closer look at our contact form Native Show It contact forms are currently made up of separate elements. You can choose to embed a third-party contact form like HoneyBook, Dipsado, MailChimp, whatever service you like to use with our embed code option. And we have a lot of great help docs specific to some of those most popular platforms that our users tend to use. Here you'll see if I click on the name field and go over to text properties, you'll see that enable input is checked. This is crucial. Enable input must be checked for any field you want a client to be able to input text into. You can also choose to make it required in that it has to be filled out for the contact form to be submitted. You can also choose in subject. So if you want their name or their date or what have you in the subject line, you can choose to do that here. If I click on the email field, you'll see we have it set as reply to so that you can reply to their email address and you can label each of these to be whatever you want which really helps you keep things straight over here in the site panel otherwise it can get a little bit confusing now most important is our send button if I click on our send button here and go down to click actions you'll see it's set up to link to a canvas this canvas and our next view if I click over to our second canvas view Again, that's our thank you message there, and you can customize this however you want. But in addition to being linked to the next Canvas view with our thank you message, you'll see this item here, which is the most important thing on your contact form. So always, always ensure that your submit contact form option is checked for that send button on your contact form. To add a third-party contact form to your website is really easy. I'm using MailChimp for this example. All I have to do is set up my contact form and format it to my liking here in MailChimp. Once I've created the form to my liking, I can simply click here, copy this entire code, and then head back over to show it. So with the contact canvas selected, I choose our embed code option here, and then click on embed info and custom code. I just paste in that MailChimp code, and I'll just drag it out to size it now let's take a look at social icons. So here I'm in my follow canvas, which is a site canvas. Site canvases are denoted by these horizontal stripes along the canvas layer. A site canvas is essentially a global canvas similar to your design settings. So any changes I make here would update any instance of this site canvas across my entire site. These are great for something like headers, footers, social contact, things of that nature, which you may have on every single page of a site if you're using multiple pages. So here you'll see that we have some different social icons. And let's say maybe that I don't use Twitter, but I'm a YouTuber. So I can click this icon and then come over here and simply swap it out with the YouTube icon provided. To link those icons, we'll select the icon we want and go to click actions. So for example, if I wanted to link our show it YouTube account here to this icon, I would just pull it up in the browser, copy the entire URL, including the HTTP, and then I will add it right here. Now one pro tip, if your dialog box in the properties panel is blue like this and the cursor is still blinking, then show it thinks that you're still making changes. So after adding something to one of these fields in your properties panel, make sure to click out and you'll see here the autosave function then understands that you're done and saves that change. Show it utilizes an autosaving mechanism which 
updates after every change you make. So if I move this icon, you'll see again here, it's saving those changes. So you never have to worry about losing your changes or saving them as you go. When you're ready to connect your domain, you can click here and follow the instructions in the dialog menu to put in a domain setup request. Our team handles connecting your domain to your site and migrating and setting up blogs for you, totally free of charge. We know that these things can get tricky and we have a great team of professionals ready to handle those items for you. That way, you can focus on your business and the creative things that you're doing and not worry about all that technical stuff. All right, y'all, we did it. We made it to the end. Great job. Now you have all the knowledge you need to create the website of your dreams inside of ShowIt. If you get stuck along the way, you can access our library of help docs, which contains hundreds of easy to follow articles to help you design and launch your site. Or hop in and start a conversation with our amazing support pros who won't only answer your questions, but will likely leave you laughing with a well-placed GIF in the conversation. That does it for me. Happy designing. I can't wait to see what you create.